I'm Ryan Reyes. I'm Dominic Angel. And together we're Un, Un Poquito, poquito. Podcast. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Uh, we have a very special guest today, so we're just going to jump right into it. He's uh, very funny. One of my favorite stand-up comedians to watch. Uh, and recently, you know, to many accolades, is the co-creator of This Fool on Hulu. Please welcome... Chris Estrada, everybody. So, blah, 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 blah. Thanks What's for being up, here. Thanks for having me. Thanks yeah, yeah. Me. We're honest, okay, I have to get this out of the way mm -hmm. because, like, you don't know this, mm -hmm. but, ser like, the very first show that I ever did, like, was at Chatterbox. Oh, okay. And you were the headliner. Yeah. Was When was this? Was this, like, this was... a few years ago, like, three years ago 2018 2019 yeah yeah there. it must yeah. have been it must have been it was in it was a january show yeah i kind of yeah really, yeah yeah I, yeah, I yeah, remember yeah this yeah yeah chris for people that haven't seen him haven't seen like his you're featured on comedy central mm -hmm. you have your hot tub set up mm -hmm. you have a bunch of stuff but Chris Estrada is like you're one of my favorite uh, comedians to watch. Like that, for real, you got awful taste. <laughs> <laughs> no, like for real. Like I say, I oh man, I feel it's like embarrassing almost to to a point. But it's like also this is just a very silly thing. But the first show that I was on, you were the headliner, and then uh, you performed on the on Chatterbox again. But it was the first time that I hosted Chatterbox. So I was like, oh, it's like... And this circle. was recently. That was the recent one. That yeah, was the that one was in March. Recent. Yeah, that was the one in yeah, March. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, man, like when I... When we started doing stand-up, we started... Yeah. Remember when you guys started? Yeah, yeah. yeah we started together and it was, you know, you're doing comedy mm -hmm. with... At the time, I didn't. it didn't register with me where like you're doing comedy around a bunch of white people yeah. and like you're just existing in this space and it's like... For me, it was never like, I never paid that much attention to it, mm -hmm. but you don't know how you feel about something until you see, mm -hmm. like, a, you know what I mean? Nope. Like a I perspective. Feel I feel you. So then I started seeing mm -hmm. you go up at the mics at Ice House at Chatterbox and stuff and like hearing you talk, like your jokes, your humor was everything that I was like, oh shit, like that's like, it is possible. Oh, oh sure. thanks man. I mean, yeah, yeah. Bro. thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, I remember when you guys started. You guys, I remember seeing you guys at Chatterbox, and because I think I remember being like, I think those fools are brothers. Like, I really, <laughs> I remember that, and I think I, I remember I told my girlfriend, I'm like, you know, they're brothers, and she's like, they're not brothers. I was like, they're brothers. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Well, that was the thing. Yeah. We so you know, I go by Dominic Angel. Yeah. Now, but when we first started, yeah, we both. I went by Dominic Reyes. Yeah. How inspired was this by Chris Angel, the magician? <laughs> <laughs> it, I wish. Because people were like, yeah, you sound like a fuck. That I thought Dominic Angel was a dumb name. And yeah. it was probably because of Chris Angel. Yeah. I was like, it's such a silly, like, to have your last name be Angel. But that's yeah. my middle name. Yeah. Like, that's, that's why I go by it. Yeah. But I changed it because we used to go up together all the time. And... It was just, it was for me, the two things happened, but it was like, it was mostly an annoying thing. Cause you know, when you go to an open mic, you just want the host to move on to the yeah, next person. You don't want them to comment on like, yeah. are these guys brothers or what's going on? Two yeah. Reyes in a row. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. people would like spend so much time. Yeah. You want and the then, individuals. That's yeah. what being a comic is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like Jace and Ben Avery, like yep. they yeah, had the same right. issue. Yeah. Uh, so then I was like, I'm just going to fucking change my name, dude. Because like they keep commenting it. And then it's always like, who's the funnier one? Yep. Yeah. And I'm always like, it's fucking Ryan, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. don't put me on the spot like that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing was, so I actually used to do a joke about it. But for a long time as a kid, I didn't like my name. Yeah. Because of my four brothers, I had like a very simple name yeah. like my, our oldest brother is ricardo antonio reyes dominic is dominic angel our little brother is diego santana and i was ryan daniel and yeah. i was like i don't yeah. like that <laughs> i feel that yeah i get it um so in fact we had a discussion about it because when yeah. we were dealing with this i was the first one to suggest a name change because i wanted to change my name yeah um but everyone I kept trying to talk me into it, like ryan reyes sounds good yeah 
back to back. I don't know the term for it is, but the way alliteration. You like it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You should you should have made yourself feel like exotic. You should have called yourself Rian Reyes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was part of the joke. Was like, how do you say Ryan in Spanish? You just Rian. roll your like Rian and Rian. Yeah. You yeah. add a syllable. And then he found out that half of the women in the Philippines are named Ryan. Yeah. Oh, are they? In the most frustrating way. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't get Ryan Reyes by itself as a tag. It yeah. had to be like the dot Ryan dot Reyes nine five one four. Like it was so frustrating how many accounts already yeah. had Ryan with an I. Yeah. And it was all women from the Philippines. You should just learn t- Tagalog. And, then like, <laughs> and you can become like a big hit comedian in the Philippines. They'll yeah. love you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I think you would do well. Yeah, they think some of us are Filipinos, so, you know. (laughs) And we think some of them are Latinos, so, you know, it's cool. Yeah, that's funny. There's there's like Spanish influence there. Like, they have the last name Reyes also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. But yeah, I remember when you guys started. Yeah, it was, it was always, it was always like, it was always cool whenever we ended up on a show together. I was like, hell yeah. Because you, you do something. People talk about you. I mean, you've had, you have accolades through the roof, you know. (laughs) (laughs) But like having in conversations with you, one thing that I love about watching Chris perform is like you do this thing that like you're very meticulous about like your joke writing. Yeah. Like you, I see you yeah. go to mics all the time and you're very like meticulous in how you like perform and like, it's like down to a perfection. Mm. And then whenever I see you like at a show, it's like I always compare it to like a boxer Mm -hmm. where I feel like you do this thing where you like, you feel out the crowd, you throw out these like little jabs and get them like warmed up. And then at a mo, there's like a moment where it's like something clicks and you know, you have them. Yeah. (laughs) I try to bury myself sometimes. (laughs) Like I just go, man, I just try to bear. Sometimes I'll say something up top that I know might not work. And Uh then I'll be like, ah, it makes me get out of the situation, you know? Yeah, Yeah. 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 It's, and it's wild. And I like, it's almost like seeing somebody like, something take over like oh, your thanks, eyes go man. into the yeah, distance yeah. and you're just like yeah it's like thanks, seeing man. somebody go super saiyan thanks man <laughs> okay yeah thank you yeah, yeah yeah but so like obviously you know you just it's been over a month now mm. that that your show's been, been yeah released. it's been out well, yeah yeah a little over a month now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and over a month. it's awesome oh thanks hilarious, man. I really appreciate you know? that. yeah yeah thank you i know you've talked a lot i've done you know the research mm. you worked with the guys that that created corporate yeah i worked with matt ingabritson jake weissman and pat bishop they used to be comedians in la mm-hmm. and then they had a show called corporate right and right. i knew them from stand-up comedy and one of them used to run this really good show in la called good heroin right and, right right um, so yeah like a few years ago those fools hit me up i was working and you know, they were just like working and trying to do other shows while doing corporate. And that's how it started. Didn't you, um, were you on an episode of corporate? Yeah, I was on an episode <laughs> of corporate. Cause you know, those, we were writing, we were creating this show. And then while we were creating the show, they were shooting their last season oh, of corporate. Oh shoot. So that yeah. was, I didn't realize there was that crossover. Yeah, there was that crossover. They, we, they were shooting their show and while we were still working on, right. on this full. And then, um and just us working together like hey you want to be in an episode and i was like yeah 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 fuck yeah him. why not <laughs> yeah, yeah that's sick yeah hell yeah so what was how many ideas did you go through to like before you settled on like this full man probably you know what's so crazy when i when they hit me up i was like working at a warehouse and i was doing stand-up comedy at night and going on the road on the weekends when i could and then when they hit me up they were like do you, do you have any ideas? Would you want to meet? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And then they hit me up and they were like, uh, we met at a bar and I didn't really have a clear cut idea. They just said, oh, why don't you do something like about where you live? And then, or something related to your life. And then they were like, think of Atlanta, but with like harder jokes. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, all right, cool, I got it. And then I came up with some like pretty much the general premise of the show and then i came back to them and they said all right i think we got something here so let's keep chipping away at this and yeah and then we just kept working at it so it was off of the first thing that i came up and then i came up with and they were like yeah we like this let's keep fucking with this so you came up with the hugs not thugs yeah the the hugs not thugs element was the first thing that uh that i came up with and then they were like all right cool like but we don't want to make a workplace sitcom right we want to make the world feel bigger so like what's the home life and then i like who would 
and I go, he should live at home if he's broke, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then he was, they were like, all right, cool. And then I, and they were like, the mom, I was like, the mom and grandma shouldn't speak English. And they were like, why? I was like, because my mom and grandma didn't speak English, yeah. you know? And Even they if like, they do speak English, yeah. like they don't, yeah, you know, they, they. Yeah, and I know some people's parents do, which is fine, you right. know, but just my mom doesn't you know right. so i and they were like all right we like that that's cool and the, so then we just kept implementing things like that well i was curious if i may <laughs> yeah, yeah cool uh, along that process like well how soon did they want to incorporate uh frank oh uh frankie quinones who plays uh the character luis um no you know it's so funny we didn't think of anybody like it was just writing it and yeah. then when we were casting people we we originally thought of the dude as a more big buff ass dude with right like, padded up right like crazy and then the thing is a lot of those fools don't know how to act <laughs> 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 but you know what it is too is that a lot of those dudes they don't have timing it's really it's not that they don't know how to act they know how to act and a lot of those dudes are really good dramatic actors right or really good like kind of intense act they're not they don't have timing right and then we we noticed that like there was an element of funny missing like anytime like when those dudes would fuck with you and like when they would read the script even if it was a joke at the expense of another character it didn't feel funny it felt like menacing <laughs> and then we were just like damn what are we gonna do and then we um we were like we should ask frankie to do it just to see and then he did it and it was cool because what we ended up working out about it was that it, it just felt like it kind of gave it like because the whole time we pitched the show as friday but directed by the coen brothers right, right right yeah so we were just like so when frankie did it he made it funny and then what also was funny was like if you really think about it like not all fucking cholos are buff not all yeah cholos, you yeah know, it, he just looked like a more human day-to-day -day real dude no you know? i thought that too because yeah. like it was interesting it looked like a stereotype yeah, yeah. exactly because i i I mean, everybody knows Frankie through Cholo yeah. Fit, for, through Creeper, yeah. and it's like a parody of it's a Cholo. A parody, yeah. But so like- Or when it's I, like his version of campiness or yeah. like something like that. Yeah. So then when, when I found out that Frankie was cast, I was kind of like, it was interesting to see him as somebody who's like a gang member. Yeah. Uh, but like when you see the part, it's like you said, you like you 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 remember that like oh not all fools are like yeah. super big, and there were people that like got into shenanigans yeah, that yeah, were yeah. just like <laughs> or also just the fact that he's just a smaller dude. Well, you know what happened is that like we ended up seeing like we ended up telling him like play the part like Joe Pesci. <laughs> like, that's super. That's what we were saying. Like yeah, like so play like Joe Pesci. So, like, even though you're small, you could still fuck someone up. Right. You know? Because I know people like that. Yeah, Or, yeah. like, I'm I'm not tall, but I'm 5'11", and I'm taller than some of my cousins who at some point were bigger than me. Those fools are, like, 5'9". Yeah, five yeah. Ten. Like, I'm taller than them. Right. You know? So, we just said, like, yeah, play like Joe Pesci in that you're funny, but you could fuck someone up if you wanted to. Right. Or, like, you're the kind of dude that would get a bat out of the car and go fuck someone up yeah you know and so then that really that's that became kind of the thing also it became the thing of like making sure he doesn't play it like creeper right you know because right. creeper's not a real character i mean he's like really funny yeah but it's not it's an like exaggeration. it's an exaggeration so i so it w we were just mindful and he was mindful of like don't play it like that character you know like don't play it play it grounded right like play it like you're a funny dude but play it grounded like you're a, like yeah just be funny but don't be goofy about it like be grounded about it yeah and i mean i've never yeah. i've i don't know frankie personally but yeah. like through his interviews and stuff it does seem there's a lot of like i don't you know like the, the personality wise it's yeah. just like figuring out the parts of himself that yeah that, yep. that, that match up that fit into the, what he brings to it and he brings something to it also it was just really based off of my real cousin so sometimes i had to like you know and he's had to be like yo don't do it like that that's not like or like you, my cousins don't talk like that right you know they're not like they're not super chicano type guys you know they're like hood dudes from south central or inglewood and 
where we don't talk like East LA people. Right. You know, which is not a bad thing. Like that, that everybody, each section talks how they talk, you know? Right. That's different. Right. That's something that I forget yeah. is that you're from South Central. Yeah. And so we see a lot of like Latino shows and media, like it's usually based out of East LA. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was interesting to see that like, different element yeah just trying to and i grew up i grew up here in inglewood too and i went to inglewood high school and i lived in south central for a long ass time and it was just it's sort of different out here you know you kind of you grow up with black people and you guys get along sometimes and sometimes you don't get along right and you know so it was more based off of that and that just telling them like sometimes if he would talk a certain way it'd be like ah not like that you know and yeah he'd yeah. be like all right cool but he's op- he's so talented and he's open-minded that you know yeah, I remember yeah. Um, seeing you guys because you've been you've known Frankie for a minute. Yeah, and I you met guys him performed. back in like 2015 or 2016, and he would he would take me on the road with him sometimes when he would be like, "Hey, do you want to like open up for me?" And and yeah, I remember you went to that Wiltern show. That yeah, yeah that yeah, show was wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was another one of those moments I'm telling you to see you on fucking at the Wiltern. Oh, thanks, man. In a packed ass theater. Yeah. Like, yeah, what was, was that cool. like? That was cool. I mean, it's always, I, I like it because it's a challenge because sometimes like, you know, he gets a certain type of audience and sometimes like I stick to my guns and I'm like, I'm mm-hmm. not going to do the kind of comedy you think I'm going to do or you right. want me to do. Like, you're going to hear what I want to do and. It's cool. If you stick to your guns, I'll fuck with it, you know? Yeah, yeah. it's interesting because you. I've heard you talk about, like, your fan base or, like, your goal is, like, for kind of, like, an evenly, like, yeah. spread out demo. Yeah, I hate when I, like, sometimes when I see a show with an all-white crowd, it makes me sick. If it's an all-Latino <laughs> crowd, it makes me sick. <laughs> if it's all-black crowd, it makes me sick. I just, like, because you know what happens is that every sometimes, like, if you're on those shows, everybody taps into, like, culturally almost what they want to hear you know it's almost like and sometimes if it's every if it's kind of a mixed crowd of like everyone they all just kind of drop their preconceived notions of what they individually think is funny culturally to them and they're all kind of like all right fuck it we're just here for funny yeah you know yeah yeah. i I, I like that yeah yeah definitely yeah yeah and you see that in the show and in your stand-up it's very much of like you're honest about like who you are and your experience. Like you talk yeah. about, you know, getting in fights and stuff yeah. and like knowing gang members, yeah. but also just like, you know, you, that's not your, your, your target. Like that's yeah. not what you're trying yeah. to like, Oh, I'm fucking Mexican. Yeah. Like, yeah. I try, I try to. And then, you know, we'll see like, you know, sometimes I work, sometimes I bomb my dick off. Like, <laughs> you know, and that's all right. You guys bombed, you know, everybody bombs. Like, yeah, yeah yeah is that like a common turn of phrase that is the third time i've heard someone say bomb my dick off in like 24 hours <laughs> oh really yeah yeah I the second like one was common. dominic and the third one was someone last night yeah i feel like i just been hearing that so i like i just been saying it but i mean that's how it feels when you're up there dude yeah. like when you're fucking struggling up there yeah it's like no dick, no dick. <laughs> just, i'm a ken doll <laughs> like i'm a ken doll it's all but yeah, it's, it was cool working with, like, doing the road with him sometimes was really a lot of fun. And yeah, and then he ended up getting the part and really being funny. And also the point is that, like, we wanted to make it feel, like, really comedic. Uh-huh. And the fact is that that I'm bigger than him, just height-wise, is funny. Right. You know, so it worked out. Yeah, it worked out pretty cool, I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it was great. You guys have awesome chemistry yeah. obviously like just from being homies and yeah yeah like, yeah i think so that's a hard thing to nail too because obviously like when i first heard about the show i didn't know that frankie was part of it until yeah. i saw like started seeing the promotional stuff and then it kind of really becomes like a show about these two you know the two together yep. like them figuring yeah. While Frankie's yeah. dealing with stuff, or and, um, Luis and yeah him. we're figuring out our shit together and individually yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah so that's like super cool to see yeah. and also just like the feeling like because i know john you have jonathan jonathan as a, rao yeah, yeah. Rao. so can you like how much control did you have over like who did you reach out to like become the because you have like so many people that are like la comics that we yeah. know like johan and johan curtis cook was curtis involved. Cook. 
it just became like when they were like we started asking for samples people just came to mind and it was like let's ask jonathan rao for a sample um let's ask johan for a sample curtis cook but then we took a lot of samples from other people like their agents and managers submitted them and then we read them and then you know sometimes it was like good but it didn't feel right you uh -huh. know and then we met like we read Jonathan sample and it was really good. Johan sample was really good. Curtis Cook. And then we interviewed them and it was great. It was like it fit in perfectly. And yeah, that's how it happened. Yeah. Like, did you have like a good feeling about them first? Like you wanted them first or was it just like, we'll see what's no. what? I, I wanted them at first and now they've become a nightmare in my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. No, they, I, uh, they were cool. They were always great. Like I want, I was like hoping it would work out. You know, I was like, I think they would be really good and they're funny people and they, they, th I think they're smart, you know, like smart and funny. So, and it worked out luckily, you know. What was the, the writing process? Like once you had the team, like, like, did you pitch, what was like the pitching the episodes? Like, how does that? Well, we came up with all the episode ideas before we started the room. Oh, okay. And then we presented all the episode ideas to the writers and the writers were like, those are great. And then we, and we said, these are our episode ideas. And then they helped us fill it in. Like, you know, we worked one by one and then they came in with ideas on like, okay, we're, we're going to do this episode. And then this is what we're thinking. And people would go, yeah, that's great. What if you do this? What if you do that? And that's how it ended up happening. Sick. Yeah. Who, who, whose idea was the Austin Powers jokes? <laughs> That was uh that was me and uh me and the showrunners had that idea and it was based off of like this old sketch idea I had about people who quote movies and how much I hate them, you know? <laughs> like you know how people love to quote like fucking family guy yeah, or like, uh, like Anchorman well, Anchorman yeah. and stuff like that. And then we ended up just coming up with that idea and then yeah, that was about it. And then we just collectively, we all pitched in and wrote jokes for it. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, that's one of the funniest episodes of TV. That, yeah. like, that was fun for me and Dr. to watch together because that's kind of our dynamics. Yeah. So I've mentioned before, I talk about all the time, I have autism. And so there's a thing called echolalia, which is just an yeah. instinctual verbal response to yeah. things. So, like, I do that, but not with full intention. I just yeah, like yeah. start quoting stuff for no reason. Yeah. And it sometimes is like inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Um, like I think one time my little brother quoted a Futurama episode and then I started talking as Bender and I did the entire scene that he had mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, well, there's times where we have to, like I have to like sit through Ryan just like doing a monologue. A monologue, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, he's Bender. <laughs> Oh man. But yeah, that's a, that episode came from that. And then, yeah, we were, it was great. We all just like pitched in jokes and try to find the narrative structure. And then we try not to be like, I think the one thing I remember when we were, we were filming it, like, I don't believe in like in TV having these, like trying to change, like give you big lessons. Right. So the one thing I thought to myself, like, um, <laughs> At the end, I go, man, I don't even know why you went to therapy. Therapy's for losers. Yeah. <laughs> and then I wanted that. I don't, I, I understand that therapy is good for people. Right. But to say therapy is good for you is not funny. Right. You know, it's not funny to say that. Right. So I just, and it's also not funny for a flawed character to say that. So I just thought these two idiots, like they're fucking morons. Like they should, they should say something like he should be like, he got him to go to therapy and then he should retreat by saying, I don't even know why you went to therapy. Therapy is for losers. <laughs> that yeah. ending was so funny, especially that yeah. it came from Julio, like from yeah. your character. Cause yeah. it is, I've, you know, I heard you talk about like, he's a character that wants to think he's a good person. Yeah. But he's not. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, that was just so funny for it to come from him to be like you when you <laughs> like you try to break up a family <laughs> yeah <laughs> that shit fucking yeah. killed me yeah spoiler alert for people who yeah. haven't seen it yet but if you haven't seen it yet you're fucking up because like that yeah. shit is so funny yeah seen it twice already yeah we were just trying to trying to end on a way where we were like how do we not teach a lesson to anyone <laughs> like i go 
what am I not interested in teaching lessons to people? And then I just thought like, this would be great. Like if we just, I mean, you, you, what you learn is you learn about the characters, you yeah. know, instead of some like moral play, you know, like, yeah. Cause people some are morality play. Yeah. You know? Cause people are flawed yeah. and like in, I don't know, not to make it all like, uh, b like heady and yeah. existential, but like uh, it takes, it takes people more than, you know, eight weeks yeah, to like yep, grow yeah. as a person, right. yeah. you know? So it's like, even like, even throughout, like, it's easier to see it with Luis because he's the one that was like released from prison yeah, and stuff. Yeah, of course. But then to see Julio like dip back into those yeah. like flaws, then those, to me, a lot of those moments are super funny yeah. when you start to see like him being selfish and actually showing his true colors yeah. and like how he really feels instead or how of narcissistic he yeah is. yeah or when they find out that they didn't go to therapy and he's all like no 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 group hug is not about right it's about me helping all of you yeah like you know and it's, it's about like, his ego yeah it's about his ego yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> about his ego and then just being like a scumbag i just i don't know i think like I don't know. I don't think good guys are good guys like shows like Ted Lasso and shit like that. Right. Where it's just like, oh, this was just a sweet guy. <laughs> Man, get the fuck out of here. Like, it's a yeah. funny thing, too, because you want you want Julio to be that dude. Yeah. Like you do want him to be like super sweet and in yeah. touch with his feelings. And yeah. like, but then you realize like he doing it for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, he's doing it for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> that's why he's not. Yeah, that's know, why he's yeah. in his mom's house. Yeah. And like yeah or also just being like working class about it you know like he doesn't have a good job or it doesn't pay well and right. probably didn't go to college you know and yeah that's okay i didn't go to college you know a lot of people don't go to college yeah i didn't yeah. ryan went i left <laughs> dog i got kicked out of community college I how went, did that happen i got kicked out of i went to i went to one university i went to cal state northridge my freshman year i got kicked out for bad grades then I went to SMC and I got kicked out. And then I went, I said, fuck it, I'm gonna go to West LA College. <laughs> and then I got kicked out. And then I said, all right, fuck it, I'm gonna go to Southwest College in South Central. Then I got kicked out. <laughs> so got, your your record of, of losing all your fights just extends to your it, education. It, it extends to my <laughs> education. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, uh, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm zero and four when it comes to like. <laughs> That's so funny. Education. I like I like uh, Julio's character because I feel like I see myself and yeah. like it's. I've, I'm sure a lot of people can relate about like want to be seen as a good person. Then it's like holy shit, like I'm being called out right now because yeah. it's like I'm like that and like like it, we're talking about college, but like literally I went to PCC to take the aptitude test. Yeah just the aptitude test like the placement test to see what classes you take and i scored a perfect in math and reading and i was like oh. i don't need but i was like i don't need this Dang. like i just i just scored a perfect on the on the end on the placement yeah. test and i was like what am i going to college for Eric like I don't, i'm done here. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like well i'm a genius yeah and i was like this, yeah. this checks out just give me the diploma already oh that's so funny yeah yeah dude i I can't even imagine. I failed out of the co like community college and I think, well, why did I do that? But <laughs> I just wasn't good at it, you know? I mean, it's the thing is, is like, uh, so I'm, you know, I went to school during the, the I was going to say don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. Uh, no Child Left Behind initiative, which is just like the standardized testing. So it's like literally like, because I remember in school, oh my God. One time I was in, I was, I was always like a gifted child, a smart guy, whatever. Yeah. Right. So like I, I was always in like the high maths. Mm -hmm. Um, but one time I, they would have me help like, like tutor other students. Yeah. And one time I forget her name. I'm not going to even use her real name, whatever. Let's just say her name was Wendy Stace. Alvarez. Wendy Alvarez. Alvarez. <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking about Wendy Alvarez. No. <laughs> but like I was showing her like an algebra thing solve for x yeah and then uh we're doing the problem and i was like okay so here's how you do this here's how you like you, d you do divide and cross multiply whatever and then in the middle of like me explaining she goes uh why is it x and i was like no you were solving for x and they're and she's like yeah no i know we're solving for x but like why is it x and i was just like 
why are you because it's x like it's yeah. it's the variable like that but she was like but where did they where did they come up with that how did they decide and i'm like these if you're act asking existential questions yeah see that's about, the existential question. about math, math like that's yeah. why you're having problems yeah that's it's, why you're yes yeah, you're not being a mechanic you're not being pragmatic right about it. yeah because that's how i was i was just like no just don't, don't ask questions like this it is this yeah. this is this and that's how it is like yeah but she was like why did she wanted to know the meaning yeah behind it. yeah 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 i went to such a bad high school i went to high school not that like a few blocks away from here at inglewood high school and it was so bad at the time like we had the lowest like standardized testing scores we were like one of the three lowest in the state mm -hmm. so like Calif the state of california always was threatening to like take over and it's because we had bad <clears throat> comprehension levels like uh -huh. bad reading and comprehension so then they had this initiative where they so the state was the school was like all right we're gonna do better we're gonna get these kids ready for like standardized testing and we're gonna get our test scores up because then if not the they take over the district right the state takes over and um uh, so those fools the way they thought we'll get them ready is we'll read to them like children like bef like for the first 10 to 15 minutes of class and we had this teacher named mr Payne, and this fool would read harry potter to us <laughs> And this was before the movies were out and it was just hilarious because he would do the voices and everything for like <laughs> different characters and we're like 11th graders we're all like 16. <laughs> but we would just have him like yell at him when he would like at the end of the class we would all go harry potter harry <laughs> potter just so he could keep reading to us it was it was great that's so uh, funny i had a my senior year i was behind in math my first two years of high school so i was like mm. i was taking geometry and and i was already supposed to be in like pre-cal or whatever mm. and that teacher like was trying to get a better job in yeah. the field of mathematics like he wanted to teach at a, at a college yeah so he half-assed like that entire year literally every other day was a pop quiz where we just watched the show numbers on fox and then would just answer questions about the show half the time Hilarious. they they weren't even math questions they were like Hilarious. what color was his t-shirt in this scene that was not interested in educating young minds <laughs> that was, was just like i'm trying to get tenure at a community college. yeah exactly that is hilarious how many and times have you guys seen stand and deliver in school three I think I saw it just once. Really? Yeah, I think. I mean, in in the school, like I think they showed it to us once in like junior high or something. That's I, not a. We never. I don't think that's something we really saw. Like, really? I mean, I remember it as a. I remember yeah, watching yeah. it as a kid. Yeah, yeah. And I remember seeing the mural in downtown LA of like Edward James Olmos as that right. the teacher or whatever. Yeah, which I do Escalante. Say, Escalante. Yeah. That just reminded me. So, because yeah. I wanted to talk about. So, like it. I. I in my high school year, uh, you're still under the No Child Left Behind Act. And so what, what that became, from my understanding, was like t schools were finding ways to just not have the most amount of dropouts. Oh. So like my school's way of fixing that was any kid who was like at risk for failing would just go to special ed for everything. And oh. it was just an easier version of all the yeah. classes. And I remember one of my classes was English for special ed. This was my junior year. And for some reason, this popped in my head. They talked the teacher out of playing the necessary material for school mm -hmm. and convinced them to just put on a regular ass fucking movie. <laughs> they were like, eventually they argued with her and eventually they're like we're not gonna watch this movie like Hilarious. we're literally just gonna go to sleep if you put this on she's like all right what do you want to watch <laughs> <Let me> watch <laughs> fucking jimmy neutron <laughs> oh man i love when you fucking students just hold teachers hostages and they're just like we're not doing this shit yeah it's insane yeah. that is fucking amazing we saw stand and deliver like i swear i saw it for like sixth grade english seventh grade english like i saw that movie once a year from like seventh grade to i graduated really and it was it was always like different because there was like you'd see it in english you would see it for like spanish class or chicano studies and then also because they're like a calculus team the fucking math like our math teacher would play it oh, like yeah. so i i saw that movie so much like just every year and it was like it's i don't know i feel like it was like uh you ever see that movie freedom riders yeah, yeah the long beach one with homegirl uh hillary swank yeah, yeah 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 i feel like it was well, a lot of the teachers it was like that where they're like i'm gonna turn yeah i'm gonna turn these students around and like show them how to appreciate an education dude we one time had a math teacher like that 
in summer school is the skinny ass white boy he looked like that actor dj qualls oh you know yeah yeah is? i know who that, that is that look just like that the, the new you know, skinny ass fool from uh the euro trip oh yeah yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, 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 yeah and he was in hustle and flow yeah yeah, I know, yeah. yeah this fool he it was at summer school for like algebra two and just like he just came in with uh like oh, man i'm gonna really teach these kids something you know like and nobody was having that shit nobody was like dog this summer school like we failed for a reason you right know? right <laughs> like, like you do that fucking inspirational shit during the regular school year <laughs> you know it's like you give us c's or d's you know yeah yeah and this fool came in and he would get punked like just little ass dude skinny frail dude he would get punked and one time this kid was like messing with him and this kid like kind of assaulted him this kid was kind of a bit of a bully though and then this teacher dude this fool just fucking squabbed like he squared up and he just started like knocking this fool out man the whole class <laughs> was crazy oh, and we were like fuck that fool up fuck that <laughs> fool up and we we're all like yelling and everybody was like crazy. he fucked them up he Damn. fucked them. and this kid was like big too and then i remember we all had to like once it was like everything other teachers came and broke it apart we were like whatever his name was like don't worry we got your back because <laughs> that kid put hands on him first and yeah like, i we mean were just like it was just so funny man just, just imagine, like, when you go to a rowdy ass high school it's just hilarious it's sad but it's hilarious yeah, yeah i mean it's probably funnier it's funny to like while you're in it and looking back at it i mean obviously you know learning how to do algebra is probably useful yeah no, <laughs> but useful. but those fights are you know those are memories you're those never are gonna forget <laughs> <laughs> i remember this guy his name was uh whitman and he uh, uh he like almost he hit a kid because he thought this guy used to get punked everybody yeah. hated this fool he's another one of those like snotty white teachers and the thing is like the this was the first year what they did was they created houses like uh small learning communities they called gotcha. them but so like you would be they did it so that every they they would group together teachers that like you all had the same students mm -hmm. in the high school so that way like you guys if you're having if somebody's having a problem blah 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 like better communication um and so his his group like was all of like the troubled youth yeah, like good. so this kid came up to him like he used to get in fights with with people all the time just yeah. like yelling matches and then one day he was writing something on the board and uh this kid came up behind him with the pencil and he like kind of poked him yeah like went up behind him and was like don't move or i'm gonna fucking pull the trigger Yo. and then he, he like froze up and he was like and then he and then they like he started laughing and so yeah. this kid like he like swung around and like knocked this fool out knocked like, the kid out he, like 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 Whoa. like because he was like yeah it became like a big thing like they they kept it on like the down low but like all right that's fair <laughs> like, I, that's fair i think that's street justice like yeah. you know don't don't fire this fool you know yeah. this punk ass kid shouldn't have done that <laughs> I love how I'm just on the side of teachers on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just on the side of teachers beating up kids, you know? I mean, they got to learn somehow. Yeah. <laughs> if they're not going to learn math lessons, they're going to learn life lessons. Yeah, they're going <laughs> to learn life lessons. <laughs> so, so you're doing the show and like you, you just came back from Arizona. Like, yeah. Just, so you're starting to like, are you, are you seeing like you're reaching a new level in like stand up right now because of the show? Yeah, I mean, it forces you to, like, you're in a situation where you're doing, like, 50-minute sets. So, right. that's good. Yeah, You yeah. know, like, it's good. And, you know, 50-minute sets, it's, like, it's a muscle. And, like, you got to be comfortable talking to motherfuckers for 50 minutes, you know, or, like, doing your set for 50 minutes. I wanted to ask, and I hate to do this because there's a clip of it, and I don't want to take it away from another podcast, but... I was hoping if you're open to it, if you could tell the story of when you performed in front of Jerry Seinfeld. Oh yeah, man. That was so <laughs> funny. Fucking Jerry Seinfeld told me I sucked. <laughs> it was great, man. I, 
I was doing a show at the Improv Lab, which is over at the Hollywood Improv on right. Melrose. You know, it's a pretty like cool club. Yeah. And it's been around for a long time. It's like the Bally Room. Yeah. And they got that little room. You guys right. been there. Yeah, it's like yeah. the Improv Lab and it's like their side room to their main room. Mm-hmm. And I was doing this fucking show. And I, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I hate like... Gimmick I, shows? I hate gimmick shows. Yeah. It's just like, let me do my fucking set. Yeah. You know, just like, I just, but you know, I was like, all right, it's all good. It was a friend who was running it. He was co-hosting it. And the challenge, they had, their whole thing was, it was a challenge show. Right. So you would pull out challenges from a hat. And my first challenge was to use someone on, uh, from the audience to sit on my lap and be like my puppet or whatever. <laughs> and then I tried it for like a minute. I'm like, I'm dog shit at this, you know? And then you were able to pull a second challenge if your first one didn't go well. And the second one was to like play the piano that was on stage and do your set. Right. Yeah. But I couldn't like do my set and play the piano because one, I don't know how to play the piano. (laughs) But I was like, this one just won't go well. So I just started saying really wild, like fucking like, I just started fucking doing street jokes basically while hitting the keys of the piano. And, um, just started doing dice clay bits. Yeah, yeah. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was just doing dice clay, you know. And then I'm like, then I came in her mouth. <laughs> boom, <laughs> boom, boom. And um, so uh, Jerry Seinfeld was performing in the main room. Right. I wasn't aware. And then my friend, this comedian named Brian Volke, really funny guy. Yeah, yeah. He went to go. He bumped into. He was hosting, and then bumped into him in the in the hallway and said, would you like to perform on my show? I'll give you a guest set. You could do like 20 minutes. And then he he, he basically came in the minute I sat on the piano. <laughs> so then, I, and then I just started doing my thing and a lot, and people were laughing. But I thought, I, after a while, I just thought to myself, they kept laughing and laughing. And I just remember thinking, yo, I must be like doing something new here. <laughs> like, I just thought like, man, I'm like, I'm not saying funny things. I'm being funny. You're Dude, embodying. You're embodying. You're the embodiment of yeah. funny right now. I got existential, like <laughs> like homegirl did with the ex. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I was just. I like, am wow. the ex. I am the ex. So you're whatever. <laughs> I was just like, yo, I must be being like really funny right now, like where it doesn't even my words don't matter or whatever, you know. And then I got off stage, and then my friend the host got on stage and said, all right, everyone, uh, we have a special guest. Give it up for Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> and then my friend came up to me, another comic named Muhammad Weinberg. And then I just went, oh, my God, did he see all of that? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, he saw all of that. And then I just went, oh, God, this is so embarrassing. And then after I think this is so embarrassing, I just heard him go, who was that guy <laughs> like, you know and then he was like that was awful like that was he goes Does, somebody should tell him not to do stand up like this is not for him and then it just killed me I mean it didn't kill me it, it made me it made me embarrassed but right. I, I wasn't like wow my dreams are shattered or anything Right. but it, it was just so funny to have that fool tell you you suck <laughs> <laughs> it's just great man what's I, the deal with yeah. mexicans on the piano yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny i yeah. for a second <sighs> i thought you were gonna say the challenge was to do comedy in front of jerry seinfeld yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would have been funny <laughs> if he just sitting on the stage just yeah just like that yeah. drinking coffee all smug yeah <laughs> with his billion dollars how funny would it have been if he sat at the piano and started like playing it just and doing like he was just like <laughs> yeah he was really good at let it. let me show you how it's done kid that was started playing <laughs> some he Chopin plays the sign <laughs> yeah he was playing Chopin and just like do, still doing the jokes like. yeah it's funny because I don't think I've ever really like had to perform in front of somebody that like I mean, Jerry Seinfeld is one of the biggest comedians in the world, so I have to be, yeah, so, but it's, like, I wouldn't even know, I've, like, frozen up in front of, like, people much, much smaller than Oh, yeah, same. I mean, I freeze up, like, I feel like I freeze up if anybody I know, like, like, my friends that I grew up with, or if a family member is in the crowd, I go, oh, what are you here? Why are you here? Like, don't come and watch me, you know? It's for us. It was different because our mom. She used to go to our, like open mic. Like she yeah. would come watch us at the open mic. So she's really like, encouraging. She invited people. Yeah, and we're yeah. like, mom, this is practice. Yeah, well, that's she, great though. I mean, it is cool, but she's also. It's like sometimes I'm like I should listen to her more, but then it's also like, 
mom, that's not how it works. Yeah. But then, I mean, well, you hear stories how like Joe Coy's mom became his manager and stuff. And, like, oh, started, really? Yeah, I yeah. I know that. And that's why yeah. she loves fucking Joe Coy because she's like, you should just let me book all your shows and let me do all your Yo, stuff. Yo, his mom does that? I do. That's, that's, what, he, that's what like uh, he used to do apparently. Like like really? when he was starting out in Vegas, then yeah. she would book his shows for him. Wow. I do remember like one or two years in, at one point mom was like, in this business and i'm like what do you mean in this business <laughs> yeah, like, i'm barely in this business and i just started <laughs> she's gonna be like michael jackson's father to you guys like she's yeah. gonna start beating Being you guys funny. and just being like i think that's the thing of like when you grow up kind of broke like you yeah. when you do something that is outside of like normal yeah like right. it can go either way where it's like either they're like no you're not gonna do this like yeah. go get a real job or they're like well if you're gonna do this you're gonna fucking be come super successful yeah and rich yeah, yeah, and like, yeah, yep. yeah yeah you, if you're gonna do it you gotta do it right and pay my bills yeah <laughs> you gotta be <beat> joe koi <laughs> yeah yeah uh well i did have a question it's kind of uh not relevant to the line of patterns um but it's about the show there was a technical thing i noticed during the show that i want to ask about where i've noticed there's there's certain scenes where something dramatic that it's in, it's implied that it's traumatic but in a funny way is happening mm -hmm. and it seems like the scene is mirroring a horror movie was that intentional yeah yeah that was intentional especially we have this episode it's like the birthday episode right that's the one i noted yeah. and then there was so i noticed that yeah. and i noticed uh the scene with the bunny yeah when she pulls the knife out it yeah, looks like yeah, yeah. trying of, to do uh, like genre shit you know like like the birthday episode the idea was that if you hate your birthday yeah. <laughs> it's horrifying for people to celebrate it for right. you you know so that was the point and then her with the knife it just felt like oh let's do something let's allude to like yeah some I psychotic thought, uh, because we already don't know if she's like yeah we've never seen a rabbit and she's talking about a rabbit and then so when she pulls the knife it's like oh is she being you know it's like She's she being fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I but like yeah, that. we intentionally did that. Yeah. I like that part because for me, the, it, it it felt like a visual way of telling. Like, that's how Latinos tell stories. Yeah. yeah. Or like, that sounds like that's how like a Latino uncle would be like, yeah, she came at me like the fucking, you seen Psycho? It was exactly like that. Like, oh, that's, that's what it felt yeah, like. Yeah, we, I don't know that we thought about it that way. But we thought about it more like just kind of intrinsically, like feelings wise. Yeah, like yeah. if you hate your birthday, it feels like a fucking horror movie. Yeah. If people are trying to celebrate it. Right. Or or she's a little fucking crazy. So so she she's been talking about this rabbit in this episode and you don't know where. Yeah, you, you've never seen the rabbit. You've never seen it. So at some point he's like, she's kind of fucking crazy. Yeah. And yeah. then she takes out a knife and you go, oh, shit, she is crazy. And then it turns out she wasn't crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of cool style plays in this. I feel like you guys did a really good job of like fitting in a lot of stuff. Yeah, we tried to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we tried to. That's just from watching like me and the guys that co-created the show together. We all like movies a lot. Right. So it was just pulling references and trying to do cool shit. So the show feels cinematic. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So well we can start wrapping it up pretty mm. soon or like now because i know you gotta you gotta you gotta get going soon mm. but can you talk a little bit about you were telling me before we started recording like you guys are you're working on season two yeah we're writing season two right now and then which has been a lot of fun and then um so it, it's one of those weird things where these companies have so much money uh -huh. that they'll go we'll pay you guys to write season two but we don't know if we're gonna give you season two wow right. that's how much money they have it's it, it's sick it's all relative to them it's well so i that's that's fucking insane yeah it's so funny because the show like spoilers but yeah. the the, yeah, the last two episodes are like um, directly about like people with too much money and yeah like yes, yeah yeah overspent <laughs> like, yeah. like uh yeah so then, yeah, the last two episodes are really about billionaires <laughs> and how disgusting they are and like, yeah yeah, yeah oh man so i mean is it is it like the whole same team you have like the same writers working on it uh, same? pretty much i mean the only difference is one of the writers this year is the comedian uh jesus trejo do you guys know who oh he is? yeah yeah yeah, really yeah. Funny of guy. course he's he's a writer yeah. on it so yeah that was the the new edition oh sick. somebody somebody couldn't come back Oh, okay. And then we replaced them with Jesus, who is like a really funny comedian. And oh, he's so. great. He was, yeah. he, I'm surprised. I mean, I'm not surprised like 
Mm -hmm. uh, like you, it was a slight or anything, but I definitely think like his, you, the people that are working on this show, like, I mean, obvious, <laughs> obviously the end result, it's not like this show just manifested in yeah, it, it's, itself, but like, I, it's it's almost like everything was meant to be. You have all the right people on the show. Yeah, like, it feels that way. All the cast yeah. is is like yeah, who should have been playing that part, yep. and like the writers yeah. that you have, the like, group you guys have Thanks, working. Man, I really like, appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Good. So I'm super excited for season two. Um, is there so now? I guess like what <laughs> since we don't know what's like mm -hmm. the 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 in store for season two, but like. Yeah um what can people do to like help you make uh, it more a little bit more certain i you know i guess just watch it and recommend it to your friends you know just like if people like it i hope they keep watching it i mean but i think it's doing well like they seem pretty happy i've noticed like, i mean just the social media average like because i'm getting ads for it we all get yeah. ads for it on like tiktok and yep. twitter and stuff yeah. and it's it's getting really good reception. Yeah, like, I think so too. So it's like critically it's done really well, which I, I was happy about. Because, you know, like what's really popular right now are dramedies. Right. Like, right. The, the, like which are good. Some of those shows are really, really good, uh -huh. you know? And I was worried that I'm like, damn, this is not going to do well because it's like, I'm. Uh, it's kind of has harder, it's like very grounded, but it has harder jokes. Yeah. And then I just thought in the age of dramedies, like people might not, like at least critically, people not, might not fuck with it. But then it turned out like critically doing really well. So that was cool. Yeah, I feel like it came at the right time, you know? And yeah. like, what, like you said, it's super grounded. Like one, one, I told Ryan, first of all, like, especially Luis, like yeah. that, the character of Luis, I was like, this is the best depiction of like, not that this is what you're going for, uh, cause I know you're mm -hmm. going broad, but like, this is the perfect depiction of like Mexican humor. Yeah. Like, like the yeah. way that, the way that he jokes and yeah. like his personality yeah, yeah. is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was just based off of yeah. like, it was truly just based off of people like I knew and like, so, and you, yeah. So it was just like, I just kept thinking like, what's my cousin like, or what are some of my cousins like? And then just putting that in there. Yeah, no, you definitely feel it. It's yeah. it's super cool, and like even the mo like the moments that are like, there's a lot of moments that you know you could see is you know ev everybody in the show, all the characters have some type of struggle, something yeah. that they have to overcome. Yeah, yeah. And so there's a stuff there's there's things that people can relate to in terms of like confidence getting your yeah. shit together you guys deal with immigration yeah. and like and like being brainwashed yeah. by like yeah you know, the american dream yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. or being broke and stuff being like broke yeah all that stuff and it's so it is cool to see it in a way that's not like heavy-handed yeah like, yeah i didn't want to be heavy-handed or i don't want to be corny about it you know yeah. Yeah. how much more because this is your first go at it so in season yeah. two like how are you in like your role compared to when you were doing the first first time around um this time season two i i guess the way we want to track the character is we just want to track him like oh he's it's like six months later mm -hmm. after the season first season ended and he's unemployed and he lives in the garage the neighbor's right. garage with his cousin Luis and He's just unemployed. And we just want to track his depression. Like, this <laughs> was just, like, kind of nihilistic. And he's like, I don't give a fuck about shit anymore, you know? Yeah. And, like... So, like, a lot of those, uh, those like, things that he had up, like, that image that he yeah. created for himself, like, yeah, starts yeah. to get washed yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, Yep, yep. Taking that shit <laughs> off. And so, yeah. Hell, yeah. That's... I mean, that's exciting. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. So, yeah, I mean, I don't... Do you have anything else? Uh, I mean, the only thing I have is the Discord question. Oh, do we have a Discord we got question? One. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just pulling it up. Oh, okay. Let me see. So, Jasmine Poisonous Flower Three asks, uh, "Was there anything in the show that you were like liked but didn't make it to the final cut, um, or anything that you wished you would have touched on more?" What was you know what's so funny? I'm trying to think. What was something that didn't make it? Damn, I actually feel like we got everything in. Like, there's a few things I would take out. 
Mm -hmm. like that i was just like probably didn't feel but those are things people like like there's a few things that the way things were staged like people came in too conveniently where it looks a little staged Uh, there was like one moment that i felt that and then shit like that but then sometimes it's a compromise you know you're i was editing it with four other guys right so sometimes and they're the creators too so sometimes they would be like nah if if it was three of them and they said Nah, we think this works. Then I was like, you know what? All right. Like, I'm willing to, if it's three of y'all saying that this this works, then I'm trying to think. Like, you know what? I wanted to get this song on. It just, it it didn't work, but I wanted to get it on. There's this song by uh, Iggy Pop and the Stooges. It's called Raw Power. Uh And we wanted to use that song when in, there's this First Communion episode where the character Luis episode. is beating up uh where he's beating up the piñata right and i wanted we ended up using like a kind of like uh like a church song yeah. like a kind of like yeah you know like a heim or whatever and uh, him but i wanted to use that that iggy pop song and it wasn't right i just like that you song. just wanted yeah. to have <laughs> yeah. a reason and then i was just it. like this shit is a dope song so you know shit like that or sometimes there was songs that i was like I wanted to use or didn't work or yeah yeah that's stuff that we didn't even get like to touch on because there's a lot of like cool music chicano batman did the theme yeah they did the theme song you had a super sick artist do your guys's titles got this guy named chas boy to do uh to to do the main title art right really cool dude he's an old kind of graffiti he's an old graffiti not kind of he's an old graffiti legend from uh from la right yeah and he he like his lettering is like really dope it's like it's kind of like it's a mix of old english and like asian calligraphy right like chinese and like japanese calligraphy right yeah it's really cool yeah no so, it's sick it's yeah. it's it came together really well yeah like this will be the last thing i oh, say yeah, about okay. it but it was like you it feels like uh i've heard you talk about this too but it feels like you were very keen on like making this like a true depiction of like LA. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to make it feel like I was like, I'm from here. So it should feel like it should feel like being from here without being heavy handed. You yeah. Know? So just making it like, yeah, just having cool art in it or like cool music or like making it look a certain way. So yeah. Hell yeah. I need to know. <laughs> no, I mean, All I right. think that's a good yeah yeah cool cool well thanks so much for yeah, being thank here for thanks for me, coming dude. through I appreciate it, i've been man. looking forward to this a lot of our you know listen people in our discord have been you know without us even announcing like yeah like people were already talking about the oh, show that's dope, man. That and then i was and then that's when i was like we should try to get chris on oh like, yeah to man do, i was know? happy i was able to do it yeah yeah, yeah this was so such a good time thanks, thanks for coming man. through you, hell yeah yeah uh you we just started you don't know what we say to wrap it up Ryan, do you oh yeah, to- we we created a new tagline. Uh, well, thank you for joining us at un poquito. Uh, am I doing both? No, that's. <laughs> I'll just tell you, just so you know what's going on. When I was right. a kid, mm-hmm. my brother, my older brother, and I used to fight, but my grandpa's from Mexico, so he didn't speak English well. Yeah. So to tell us, uh, to he he meant to say don't fight. Yeah. But instead, he, what came out was don't fly. So I now know. that's how we say goodbye. All right, that's so up. that's how we wrap up the episode. Cool. So from us at un poquito, don't, don't fly. fly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah.